Um, I'm Michael Roberts, uh, Senior Solutions Architect for AD Link Technologies Advanced Technology Office. Andre Odermott and myself will be um, co-presenting this. Andre? Andre Odermott, I'm Software Integration Engineer with RTI. And as Mike said, this is about interoperability between two different implementations of the phase TSS. So um, a little history about this. Uh, a year ago, September 21st, actually, I presented this at the Face 10 in Dayton, a demo that I wrote that uh, integrates, takes a BALSA data model and integrates live ADSB data from, uh, from the internet and then visualizes it on the screen. Uh, and then um, after we did that, uh, Andre and Chip and Downing and I from RTI got together and decided, wouldn't it be nice if we did an interoperability demo? And so Andre and I started that in September, and we've actually presented that um, at the Face Tim in Phoenix uh, this past March. So, so the goals of this were uh, to to show that OMG Data Distribution Service uh, as a standard uh, would be an ideal solution for interoperability between Face TSSs, um, and also we wanted to get live ADSB data from the internet, and then send that over the face TSS and visualize that. Yeah, and since the two face conformant implementation of a TSS are actually based both based on DDS, we thought it was perfect to actually show interoperability since DDS is a perfect standard to use for for the TSS since it really does all the functionality that the TSS specifies on the data distribution and it's really leaves it all, does it all handle itself and is actually, in, um, doesn't need the application to know where data is sent and all this, like the TSS, like the idea of the TSS. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about how do we get this live ADSB uh, data. Uh, so next slide. So, um, so what we do is there's a, a, a network out there, a, web server called OpenSkyNetwork.org, and using a REST API, you can specify a region of space, time by Latin long coordinates to get live ADSB data. And what this demo does is it has a app that gathers the data from the OpenSky network, sends it to via DDS topic to the publishers and subscribers. And in this demo, we have both a publisher that's publishing data from from ADLink and being received by RTI, and vice versa, we have an RTI publisher that's sending data to uh, ADLink. And of course, on both sides, we have a visualizer that takes this live ADSB data and actually draws um, an aircraft on the map and uh, updates that periodically uh, once every 10 seconds, which is what um, the Open Sky Network allows. Uh, next slide. So before we go into the demo and how it's gone, let me give a little background on, on DDS, what DDS is. So in DDS, you have the concept of a virtual data space, and then you have applications that can publish or subscribe to that vir virtual data space. So you're basically defining topics with just the information that you want to exchange, and then you, as I said, you can publish it, and then whoever subscribes to it or is interested in it can receive it. And you can subscribe with different attributes, which is in the DDS standard called quality of service. So you can say, I only want it on a certain time interval, or I only want data with it met, meets the certain conditions. I want it reliable. I want it best effort. So there's a lot of attributes that you can attach to your communication. It also as the concept of dynamic discovery. So once you start up, you can say, I'm here, I'm interested in that data. And depending on how it's configured, you may or may not get historical data. Um, so you don't have to go and query and say what happened in the past. You can actually configure it so that the moment you start up, you get all this information. So when it maps to the TSS, so a, a connection that you create in the TSS actually gets mapped to the DDS topic. So if you're talking about the BALSA, Demo application, ADC data, the config data, and I think there's one more um, data element that's being sent or connection that's being made uh, from the BALS application. 
they all map to a, a DDS topic. And what we did in this demo is basically take, we took the, the air config data, which has that string information and use that in order to send data across. Okay, so the way this works is we actually had two computers, um, each one running all four applications. We had a console app, OpenSky to JSON, a publisher, a subscriber, and a visualizer. And as Andre was mentioning, because uh, DDS has all a wonderful wealth of quality services, one of them being a partition, we actually partitioned the data. If you'll see the, the message uh, on the left, uh, the published data was published under the RTI partition, which the lower two apps on the right for RTI receive the data only coming from the uh, RTI partition, and vice versa. RTI had the same console app and the pub based TSS publisher publishing on the AD link partition and the application on the, running on the AD link side, the subscriber and the visualizer. Uh, they uh, received the data only from the AD link partition and would visualize it. And uh, one note about this visualizer is it's fully interactive. You can actually uh, grab the screen and drag it around to a new location, zoom in, zoom out. And it actually sends data back to the uh, open sky to JSON on the other side with new set of coordinates. And so it would update where, where you know, on the map it's being visualized. So in this, this demo is actually pretty simple. So it has a, just a few components to it, but DDS itself can actually handle much larger setups as well. So the way it is designed, it can be a large, uh, a small network, local network. It can have then interfaces to bigger networks. So it really scales well to, to large application. So this slide here is just a small example of how it can be used where you have basically some localized DDS network um, that then like the edge processing that has its own data bus from all the sensors and does some processing and publishes it on a different domain and a different data bus that's then used by the flight control or other application. So it really scales nicely from a small setup like the demo we have to a bunch of systems with hundreds of endpoints, et cetera. So the DDS, some of the DDS applications out there run the control for um, big power plants and uh, dams or hospitals, uh, et cetera. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a small thing like our demo. The other thing with DDS, as we mentioned before, it's, it's message, it's not message centric, it's data centric. So the data is the king. That's what I usually try to des describe it. So if you look at it, what, what makes it message centric versus data centric? Let's say if you want to schedule a meeting and you do this over email and you say, hey, let's meet Monday at 10 a.m. And then you send out another email and say, here's the dial info that we should use. And then something comes up and said, oh, you mail out and say, let's move the meeting to Tuesday. And then at the end, when it comes around for the meeting, you're trying to figure out, so what time is actually the meeting? What's the, what's the information? And maybe even who all did I invite, who all did I send the meeting to? If you look at, that's what I describe actually as message centric. If, I, if you look at data centric, it's like your calendar application. So you're just writing the information in the calendar about what, what the event is with all the information attached to it. And if you make update, you send it, you put it in there and you have one view of it that describes what the event is. So that's what I, use as an example for data centric because the data is really the key the information that you go off now the other beautiful thing is with this is with the publish subscribe and data centric approach is as an application you don't have to worry about whom to send it to because the dds takes care of that you don't have to worry about storing information because you can have histories and you can have durability and all these things in the dds layer and you don't have to worry about addressing and marshalling as DDS is, has this automatic discovery. It does marshalling between platforms, so you can have a Java application on a power PC, talk to a C++ application on an Intel PC, and the data comes across correct. So 
this is actually the boundary diagram of our demo. So we really just created two simple PSSSs that get data in and then write data back out. Because the idea was to show interoperability of using different transport segment services implementation. We didn't really want to build a big application and and all this. We try to, our applications according to the FACE standard, but the goal was to show how we can actually use different implementation of the TSS service and within the same application. And we built actually both applications with both of the different TSS implementations. Say next slide. Oh, there we go, thanks. Yes. So, so the important thing to note here is that the publishers and subscribers are both using face conformant TSSs, uh, AD links uh, TSSs to the 2.1 profile, and it's, we have that available for both C++ and or Java. Um, and it's interesting to note, because we're using DDS, it would be just as easy to have interoperability between a 2.1 and a 3.0, as long as the underlying protocol is uh, DDS. And another important thing to note is that if when we get to the diagram, you'll see the we got the the upper of the console uh, open sky to JSON and the visualizer, which are both non-conformant, non-face applications. But because of DDS, we can actually use the same IDL data model that was generated for the face conformant TSS, and those applications can publish and communicate with those face conformant TSSs using uh, legacy applications. Uh, next slide. Yeah, and this is the other TSS that we use, the RTI Connects TSS, which is also face conformant to 2.1 right now. We're working on 3.0. You can find the information, the face registry, it's all in there. It's actually uh, certified for the safety base and safety extended, and we're using it in conjunction with our Connects micro implementation, for which we also have DO178 LA. Uh, evidence, so if safety and certification is even important, we can address this as well. But let me go to down here to see how we actually put the demo together. And since we, as Mike mentioned, presented it at the at the Tim and not at Tim at the Bits event in March, it was easy for us to actually put it on a laptop with Windows, even though I would never. Uh, claim that Windows is a face conformant operating system, but it was just easy for us to do the, the demo there. It, it works on, on Linux as well, but it was just easy to, to do it on, on Windows since laptops were really easy for us to, to move around. So the way it works, we have an application that queries the REST API, as Ms. Mike mentioned, from uh, OpenSky, and then publishes it out as the ADS um, as a data that's being used in the face data model. So that application, since it uses REST and interfaces, et cetera, is actually using C Sharp and does not use the TSS. It just publishes it out on the DDS layer. And the publisher is the one that has the TSS stack implemented, receives the data, actually splits it up in separate ADSB messages, sends them to the face subscriber, which then combines them again into one big string, sends it out onto the map display, which is also an application that was written in C-sharp since it uses the GMAP package. And it's also just straight DDS, doesn't use the TSS. So the publish and subscribe are the two face uh, compliant applications or face, full in the face standard. And then since the data model of it for BALSA 2 and 3 is the same. We actually just run one of the BALSA applications as well to subscribe to the data, and we could use there the, the 2.1 or 3.0 um, example. So again, to, to reiterate, um, both uh, ADLINK and uh, our RTI, we had a face conformant 2.1 certified TSSs. We actually did a live demonstration of ADSB data. Um, I actually, a year ago in Dayton, I actually demoed with live data, and everybody said, you're crazy to use live data in an environment like this, but I did it anyways, and it worked. 
Um, and so uh, I shared all the source code to uh, Andre, and he put it together, and it really didn't take long. I think it was 20 to 40 hours, something like that, to get this system going. Um, and, what, and, and by the way, uh, I have all the source code to this entire demo on my GitHub, and I will make that available to anybody who wants uh, access to it. I've also got uh, a YouTube video uh, that I did that I will make available uh, to anybody who wants to watch the video of this, this demo in action. So once the ADSB JSON grabs the data, it sends it to uh, uh, the, the publisher, uh, and then the publisher breaks it apart, sends it as individual tracks over to the um, subscriber, and the subscriber takes the data and puts it back together, sends it to the visualizer, and of course, the visualizer, um, the visualizer, is, like I said earlier on, um, it actually takes the data. But part of the ADSB data is a, a field called true track, and it actually takes the true track, which is the vector of the airplane, rotates a bitmap, and then draws that bitmap in the exact lat long uh, it is. And you can actually take your mouse and hover over any aircraft, and it'll show you that aircraft's altitude. Um, in uh in in i think it's in it, it comes in meters in uh from adsb but i convert it to feet because uh, we're here in the u.s uh next slide yeah so the the to put the whole thing together was actually very easy and i was to some extent surprised how easy it was and the goal what makes it easy was really that we both used the same wire protocol so having interoperate with each other was, was was very simple. We didn't need any of the optional components, TPM, et cetera, so we could keep the TSS layer really small and simple. Um, also, the other thing that I was actually surprised and kudos to the FACE technical standard is how easy it was to take the application, the publish and subscriber that Mike has written, and then uh, plug in a different TSS. Since the API is well defined in, in the phase technical standard, it was actually just kind of relinking it with a different set of libraries. It was actually pretty simple to do that. And as a side effect, I think an additional bonus that we had here is that it was easy to actually use existing DDS applications like our visualizer and all this that use C-sharp, which we don't have language binding for the TSS, and we will probably never use on an aircraft anyway, it was easy to put those in and write some applications. So if you want to do some testing, it's really easy to just build some straight up DDS applications. And with that, we open it up to questions. So we had two questions come in the chat. We have one minute left. so. We'll do the question and then I can send you the follow-up question via email afterwards. Okay. So the first question is, the FACE specification and API doesn't contain concepts like topic name, DDS, QoS, nor sample keys within its data model types. How do apps manage to interoperate with some controls in the API to degree these values between senders and receivers? Okay. So. Um the way uh, our face DSS, and I'll let Andre answer for uh, RTI, uh, we have a configuration file where you specify um, the, the information for, for the publisher, subscriber, and uh, each element connection in the TSS. And, uh, what, and you can specify all that in uh, an external configuration file. Yeah, it's the same for us. We have a configuration file where you basically map the TSS connection to a topic name, you can attach a, a QS to it. And if you wanted to use certain things like keys, there is ways to actually configure saying, I'm only interested in, the, in that key value for this connection. Uh, you could do that as well, but I don't think the, the TSS API itself right now does a good job in supporting keys and some of those advanced features, which would be nice to have. Right, it would. Yes. Great, thank you. And since we don't have enough time to answer the other questions, I will send that to both of you gentlemen via email, and I have the submitter's email as well, so we can get him an answer. So this concludes um, our presentation today. Thank you very much, Andre and Mike.